grade 8 math number 8.4b elimination method solved by multiplying and subtracting. In some linear systems neither variable can be eliminated by adding or subtracting so we multiply one of the equations by a constant so adding or subtracting will eliminate a variable. When equations don't have the same coefficient the opposite coefficient you know to create a zero pair for one of the variables, then one or both must be multiplied by a constant to create the same or opposite coefficient. And coefficients that are multiples of each other are the best to eliminate first. Every term in the equation is multiplied by the constant to raise the entire equation by that amount. That way, the entire equation is raised an equivalent, okay? So, recap real quick. This is a term, this is a term, and this is a term. These are variable terms because they have variables in them. The coefficients are the numbers that are in front of the variables. That's a constant term. That's a constant number. It's not going to change. It doesn't have a variable with it. See? So here's our system of equations. We've got 6x plus 5y equals 7 and 2x minus 4y equals negative 26 as the second equation. So what do we multiply by? Well, if you look at these, we could take the long way because they can both be multiplied by different numbers. We could multiply this equation by 4, and that'll raise this to a 20y. Then we can multiply this by 5 and raise that to a 20y, and then we can eliminate the y. Or we could take the easy route and just multiply equation 2 by a 3, and then we can eliminate x. See? Quicker. So we do that. We have 2x minus 4y equals negative 26, and we multiply each term by 3. That becomes a 6x. 3 times negative 4 is negative 12y, and negative 26 times 3 is a negative 78. And now we have this as our second equation. Now we can use subtraction to eliminate this variable x. Now multiplying each term by a negative constant, because we could have multiplied each one of these by a negative 3, so we'd have a negative 6 and a positive 6 here. Well, if we had done that and multiplied each term by a negative constant, then subtracting, that is a greater chance of making mistakes than multiplying each term by a positive constant and adding, okay? That's why I chose to just use 3 instead of a negative 3, all right? So, remember when we're subtracting integers, we add the opposite? Do you remember that from before? So we stack our equations very neatly with the terms above each other, all lined up nice and neat and we add the opposite. We've got a positive 6x take away a positive 6x. That's going to make 0, okay? So we got 0x here. So that's gone, all right? Because we don't need to write 0x. And we've got a positive 5 taking away a negative 12y. So we're going to add the opposite. So instead of subtracting negative 12, we're going to add a positive 12. See, we added the opposite. So now we've got a 17y. And we've got a positive 7 take away a negative 78. So we're going to add the opposite. So now it's an addition. And this is a positive 78. All right? So that gives us 85. Now I do have a video about adding the opposite, okay? That was way back, all right? We're way past that now because we're in Chapter 8 of 8th grade. If you don't understand this, then you're in trouble and you need to go back, okay? You've gotten ahead of yourself. So now we've got 17y equals 85. And we, can, we know that we can divide each side by 17 to isolate that y. So that makes it our friend the invisible 1. So we've got 1y. One and instead of dividing, I made it easy on myself and I actually did quick multiplication. And I thought, well, it's got to end in a 5, so it's going to be an odd number to multiply it by. If I multiply this 17 times a 4, I want to make sure I get a 5 in this spot. And I knew 7 times 5 would have a 5 because it's 35. So that gave me the 85 I needed. All right, so I got lucky and thought about it and did it real quick and did quick multiplication. So now we've got y equals 5. So now I can substitute that 5 as the y into an original equation. So I chose the top one, 6x plus 5y equals 7. All right? So now y is going to be 5. So now we've got 6x plus 25 equals 7. 
Now we can use the properties of equality, you know, those inverse operations, to isolate the x because this canceled out, didn't it, as a zero pair. So now we've got 6x equals, and we took 25 away from the positive 7, we got a negative 18, all right? 6x equals negative 18. We divide both sides by the 6 to get this x by itself. We get our friend the invisible 1, and we've got 1x, and negative 18 divided by a positive 6 gives us a negative 3. So now we've got our solution set. It's negative 3, 5. So now all we have to do is plug these values into the original system to check them to make sure they're right. And we put a negative 3 and a 5 in for the x and the y. We get negative 18 plus 25 equals 7. We add 18 to each side to get rid of this and create a zero pair. And we add the 18 to this side, and we get 25 equals 25. So it's true for this equation. So now let's plug it into the other equation, because we want to do it to the entire system to make sure we got it right. So now we've got 6 times negative 3 minus 12 times 5 equals negative 78. That gives us a negative 18 minus 60 equals negative 78. We add the 18 to each side. We create a zero pair, right? And this negative 78 plus 18 gives us a negative 60. We've got negative 60 equals negative 60, and that's true. So we know we did it correctly. See? See how we did that? So just remember, if we, had mul we could multiply it by a negative 3. There was no problem in doing that. It's just that you've got a greater chance of making a mistake doing it that way. So don't think you can't do that. And also remember that both equations can be multiplied by a constant, and it doesn't have to be the same constant. We could have raised these to 20y by multiplying this equation by 4 every term, and every term in this equation by 5. And we could have eliminated y first, okay? No big deal. All right, we're going to talk about the elimination method and doing a word problem next. All right? We'll see how that goes. I'll see you there. Bye.